Welcome back to Dredge. We are going to head off to Stellar Basin, which is in the southwestern corner of the map. On our way there, we're going to make a few little stops at some uh, shipwrecks and some other odd things on the way. Some little s small islands. shipwreck over here which actually I don't think that's a real shipwreck that might be one of the crabs there it is um, in pretty much every every area there's at least one giant crab disguising itself as either a shipwreck or um, a plane or rocks and as soon as you get close, it will rear its big old rocky crab arms and try to try to hurt you. So you just have to back away quickly. So, um, what you're gonna see here, it says day 25 up up here. Um, this is actually my second playthrough. The first time I played through, um, I mean, I was fairly pleased with how I went through everything, but. Um, I'm going to show you a side pursuit that I didn't know about until after I had finished Stellar Basin the first time. And I think if you're like me, you might want to take this, uh, to get this taken care of first rather than after everything else. Because we are going to find a doggy and we're going to give that doggy to an NPC. And then, if you do that, before you do anything else, then you can go and visit that doggy every time you have to visit the NPC. Why not, right? So we're doing a little dredging. I should also mention that we have our trawl net on. Oh, and here we already caught the Aurora jellyfish, something we're gonna need soon. And right as soon as we catch the jellyfish, we get the notification. We discover there's a dog all by itself barking. I guess I kind of gave it away a little too early. So while we try to calmly approach the dog without scaring it away, giving it some fish and so forth, uh, as I just mentioned, the trawl net is installed and we did have it down because in this area we need to catch a uh, one aurora jellyfish and we actually caught it so we're good to go we can also catch um the glowing octopus i think we can catch in our trawl net one of the other fish we can we can catch in our trawl net but we don't have to we can catch other ways but the, the Aurora Jellyfish is the only one that you have to have the net on in order to catch, and you need to catch one of them for one of the early pursuits here. So we finally coerced the dog, and we're going to have to transport the dog with us. You can keep the dog in your cargo, but it takes up four spots, and it doesn't really, as far as I know, give you any good benefit if you give it to one of the NPCs we're about to meet and it fulfills a pursuit and then you're all done. I imagine if you keep the dog on your boat you could run into some problems. Right there is a uh, piece of I guess some some old docks and like that kind of thatch roof village uh, you, if you um, use your explosives on that, you can go into a little tiny area. Oh, there's a firefly squid. That's the other. Well, that's one of the other ones we need for the next pursuit. So that must have been the one I was thinking of. Caught by the net, the firefly squid. Um, so anyway, if you use explosives on that area that we just passed by, there is a refined metal in there. So this is the basin. This is the basin at night. It is very pretty. Here is 
a glowing jelly, a glowing octopus, sorry. Glowing octopus, that is the third fish that we need for our next pursuit. And we just need one more and we can go straight to the NPC and get it taken care of. But first we're gonna make a pit stop. I don't remember what the last fish is. Let me pull it up here on my on my computer so I can give you a little bit more information here as we are going through this. I put all these videos together and I'm just kind of going off the cuff for the commentary. Oh, that's all we needed was the glowing octopus, the firefly squid, and the aurora jellyfish. Just the three. I thought we needed four of them. Mm. So as I mentioned, we have the troll net on. Um, if you hadn't already gone through the process of fitting your uh, hull with a troll net, you need to uh, dredge two cloth and one lumber and spend $125 and that will turn four of your rod spaces uh, into net spaces as well. You don't lose those spaces to rods, you can use those four spaces for rods or for the net. You can change it up anytime you want. And then um, the net here that I'm using, it's the it's the first net and it costs 250. So 375 altogether and just three materials. Super easy. Barely an inconvenience. And here we've found the old fortress and inside is the researcher. It is kind of interesting, every single one of these little escort missions, the castaway, the builder, the dog, um, I guess save for the hermit, because the hermit is definitely an important one, um, but every single one of these, the reward for helping them out and bringing them to uh, the place they need to to end up, it's not that crazy of a, of a reward, Doesn't it's not that helpful. But uh, at least it handles the pursuit and it's the good ending, you know? I shouldn't say that. It has nothing to do with the ending. But it, at least it, the pursuit itself has a good ending. So. so here we are at the laboratory and generator. And we're going to investigate the laboratory and we're going to be able to find two research parts and this little doodad here, which is the prototype part, which we need to find for the researcher. We'll look in, look around on the floor. And then we find a second research part. There's nothing in the generator space. We're gonna utilize that in uh, in just a little bit. But once we leave the dock here, behind this rock right behind us, if we swing around to the other side of this rock. We will see in the water a little dredging spot and that will give us one more research part. So that gives us three research parts all together right in this little area. And we're gonna bring 
the prototype part to the researcher. She's going to turn that into a abyssal rod, but it's not the best rod. It'll get the job done, but then what that will do, it will unlock the, um, the ability for you to use your research parts to then unlock better abyssal and hadal rods. So we'll take a look at that in just a minute. And if you noticed, we were just looking at the the base in there, those long fluorescent blue things are tentacles that belong to a beast, some kind of kraken, that if you go anywhere near the, the center of the basin, it becomes angry, it turns red, and it will destroy your boat, and you'll basically have to restart from your last checkpoint, the last time you docked. Mm. Let this play out here for uh, a quick minute. And uh, we will find out, oh, we got the repulsion machine. We're gonna use that on the generator. And she's gonna give us another list of um, fish that she wants us to catch. But we won't be able to do that until we complete our rod and upgrade it so we can both catch abyssal and hadal. So we'll take a look at those real quick. Giant anthropod, uh, the angler fish, the what's this one called on the bottom i always think it's called an eel but it's not snailfish and then the one with the law the mouth open is called a loose jaw that's not in the basin it's actually on the other side of this kind of circle of islands that we're in the middle of so you can go and pick that up without any any problems uh, once you have the the rod installed. So I believe we're gonna head over to the traveling merchant. And it just flashed on screen there the uh, the book that we just finished for our uh, I think relaxed mind I think it was called gave us a ten percent. Uh, drop in panic and the one we read before that gave us five percent faster engine speed than listed which i guess means if it says you have 55 percent engine speed you actually have 60 percent don't know how that works but there you go so here is the uh the generator we're going to put the expulsion machine in here and all we need to do is come to this generator we get another research part great that's four research parts all together. So we're practically set to gather the fish. The only thing we need to do is spend some research parts and buy a rod that can do abyssal and hadal. And then we'll be able to catch everything that we need. We should be able to catch at least one, if not two, of the fish that we need. I believe the loose jaw is the other abyssal fish and we won't catch him until until after we upgrade the rod because he's a little bit out of the out of the way so here is the angler fish was the only one that I recognized of these of these four again I'm very interested to know whether or not some of these fish were made up or if they are all real biological things that you that you can see in the water uh, please ignore the figure in red the flames of the deep those are two pursuits that I accidentally started and one of them uh, means that the, the figure in red is going to be dead by the time we get back to him. So I'm supposed to catch an anglerfish. A, I just had the list up there. Um, a giant amphipod, a snailfish, and a loose jaw. 
There's also um, the gulper eel is directly behind us here at the generator. We need a Hadal. Oh, I guess we I cut there, so we're back with the researcher. But the gulper eel is um, the the exotic fish for the recording rarities pursuit. But we do need the Hadal rod. It's quite a large fish as well. So I would hold off on catching it because it does take a lot of space. But you could always go straight to the merchant. You can use the uh, the repulsion machine anytime you want. As often as you want, I mean. So here we go, bottomless line. This will, one research point will get us exactly what we need. And we actually do have enough at this point <laughs> to buy the other, the fathomless winch. Or winch. <laughs> I don't think I'd do it though. I eventually do in this playthrough, but I don't think I'd buy it here. But either way, the um, the Hadal and Abyssal Rod together are going to give us what we need. Oh, apparently I don't have enough parts. I, I'm just looking over on the left and I realize it's zero now. The only problem with kind of editing in some some parts of a second playthrough just for just for clarity and just for showing a couple things. You see the uh, the books that we read are there: ten percent resilience and panic for the relaxed mind that we just finished, five percent extra uh, engine boost, uh, engine uh, speed, then shown. I think, yeah, the researcher is going to give us a book as well. Um, so now we have the rod. And I guess I took a quick break and came over here instead and found another research part. So this is that little kind of village area where we found the dog behind that sparkly area right there. If we explode, if we use explosives for that, we can get the refined metal that you can see bubbling over there. But I do not have any at the moment. But again, it's another, another refined metal that will uh, serve you well instead of buying it for $500. So we've unlocked it, but we haven't installed it. I guess that's what, I guess that's the reason why. So we're gonna need to remove our, uh, I believe that's the Coastal Shallow Rod and install the Abyssal Hadal Rod. We're gonna keep using our net just for fun. Possibly catch a few more things. But, um, so when you start out, you don't have six spaces on each side. So I've already done a few upgrades to the to the hull. So keep that in mind. If you haven't done any upgrades to your to your cargo hull, um, you're going to need to do that in order to fit that rod. But we're going to let this play out a little bit. You're going to see me catch some more of uh, the fish that we need, and I believe I'm also going to catch the gulper eel first. I'm going to sell it to the traveling merchant because it's right over here. So keep watching and we will see the fish and the relic.
So a pretty decent haul, if I do say so myself. A exotic fish for the recording rarities pursuit. Three of the four fish that I need for the researcher's pursuit. And the relic, the ring relic, right in the middle there. So at this point, if we weren't finishing pursuits, we could head to the collector, we can move on with our lives. But let's just get it done. Because you get a book as a reward and peace of mind knowing that you helped this researcher. Again, this is my original playthrough. That's why the dog is not there. I apologize. Yeah. I did not know. Hmm. So in case you were wondering why we're back at Gale Cliffs real quick, this uh, was shown in the previous video. This is when I told the traveling merchant about the recording rarities fish that I found. This was after I excavated the ore fish and then realized that it said I had found the gulper fish, I, gulper eel. I had no idea when I found the gulper eel because right there, as you just saw in the footage, I picked it up and I just moved on with my life and I actually sold it without realizing that it was the fish that I needed for the recording rarities, but it's all good. I told her about it now and I got two more rec um, research parts for it. And then the other two we will get to in the videos coming up. So we'll be heading back to the Stellar Basin here. I'm also showing uh, the sale of it. I think that was like 300 almost $400 there. Each of them cost about, or, or you get about three to $400 for selling them. So this is me locating the loose jaw, the last fish that we need for this pursuit. I believe I'm going to show you the map so that we can get fairly close to identifying where it is. That's the red snapper. Sometimes it's hard to tell exactly where we need to go. But the game does a pretty good job at least when you pull up the telescope and you find what you need to find and then you back out of the telescope at least you're still facing the same direction. So you just angle your boat and hope for the best. So again, here is the loose jaw. We need the abyssal rod, but it is nowhere near the center of the basin. So no need to worry about it, no need to operate the generator. We'll just get what we need, and we'll bring it to the uh, researcher, and we will finish up the pursuit. I do apologize, it looks like I didn't pull up the map, and now that it's dark it's very hard to tell exactly where I was. To the best of my recollection, I want to say it was kind of northwest of the northwest island of the basin. There's four islands that kind of form a circle. They're not connected, they're kind of, it's a very open circle. There's spaces in between the islands, but I think the top left island, if you travel out kind of northwest from that island, just a few hundred feet, you should be able to uh, find the, the loose jaw. Again, sorry that I didn't pull up the map. I could have sworn I did that. I mean, I probably did that on my second run and didn't record it. Or I have that recording and I didn't put it in. But here we are. We've finished the pursuit. We've handed in all of the items we need to hand in. And uh, we're wrapping up the pursuit here. And we're going to get a book from her. And be on our way to the collector.
So of course we used Manifest and we are back at Blackstone Isle. We're gonna turn in the ring and we're gonna get Banish. Again, every single one of these abilities, very useful. Banish is superb. When you're out at night, when you are in Gale Cliffs, you can eve it, even use it on the Kraken that was in Stellar Basin. If you time it out right, you can just use Banish, go out to the center, grab the one or two things that you need, and get out of there without using the generator. But the generator can be used as many times as you want, and it's right next door, so you may as well use it. But still, you have that ability now. So the collector's going to give us that, and we're going to use it. Uh, I will say, each one of these abilities has a trophy tied to it, and we already showed you the haste trophy for uh, overclocking above 50% without blowing your engine for 10 seconds. We showed you the manifest trophy for transporting yourself to Blackstone Isle from a long, long distance. The banish trophy is a little bit more difficult and I found that I was using banish a lot throughout the game, but it was one of the very last few trophies that I got. Basically, the trophy asks you to banish 10 different threats, whether it is the giant anglerfish that's disguising itself as a boat, and here we're talking to the lighthouse keeper just to uh, check in with her. Um, but again, I'm back, back to Banish while you read this. I banished all sorts of pink clouds at night. I banished um, the one-eyed serpent in Gale Cliffs, all sorts of things. I felt like I banished well more than 10 creatures, but I didn't get the trophy until very late, very late in the, in the game. So um, this is the Red Snapper. I'm going to guess that we are going to work on the hooded figure for the Stellar Basin area. There's a couple little side uh, pursuits and fun little things that we can do in the top corner of the map. Yes, we're definitely going to the hooded figure, who is the gold figure here in Stellar Basin. They are going to ask us for a red snapper, and I don't remember what the other two things are offhand, but we will find out in just a minute. So, so once you have Banish, um, I would say just use it as often as you can. I don't believe it works on the, the clouds, kind of like the purple-pink kind of mist that's out at night. I believe that is not a threat until it becomes something else. If you wait and you leave your light on, the light on your boat is what attracts those mists. If you turn your light off, it will leave you alone. But if you keep it on, it might form a, a tentacle that's going to hit your boat, or a speeding killer whale that's going to come and chomp you, among a few other things in the the next area we're going to go to, it forms a bunch of vines that pop out of the swamp and whip you, whip your boat, not you. <laughs> so I imagine if you hold off on banishing the threat until it becomes an actual physical object coming towards you, then uh, it may count and you might get it a lot faster than I got it. So, so while I was gabbing there about banish, we caught a fangtooth, as well as an aberration of a fangtooth. And we are heading back, even though it's a little hard to find where we are and where we're going. Uh, it's pretty much a straight shot here to the, the hooded figure. It's just hard to see. He's behind us now. So the Red Snapper, and then the Fangtooth, and then the final one must be pretty simple to get. It's probably an Abyssal. Oh, 
Oh, a blue crab. Okay. So very easy. Just set your uh, crab pots out in the Stellar Basin, wherever it says that crab pots uh, can go to catch plenty of uh, crabs. Wait. Usually takes about a day. And then grab a blue crab and you will have what you need. So there's a blue crab. We actually get two. A metal winning crab and a regular crab. So we will just grab the one we need for the hooded figure and we will turn that in for another well completed pursuit and an extra book. So again, ignore the Flames of the Deep and the figure in red pursuits. Um, there's only three more pursuits left. And those are all in Devil's Spine. And turning in the last two relics. Or one relic, right? Because we just turned in. No, we still have two more to turn in. We haven't... Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> we haven't done the... Uh the Twisted Strand yet, so there's definitely more Pursuits than three left to do. I'd say four or five. So, um, what this footage is has nothing to do with any Pursuits, has nothing to do with any Trophies. There is a cool little thing that you can do in the Stellar Basin, and you can find three pieces of a treasure map. And if you put them together, they're going to show you a piece of the map and a place where a treasure is waiting for you to discover. And because you drive a boat, and the only thing you can do is pull things out of the water, my guess is we're not going to be grabbing a shovel and going on land. So, so you're going to see me come up to three um, different spots. Some shipwrecks. You'll see on the screen here the map location where I am. And then I'm going to drop a crab pot at each of the three locations that I will show you at the end, and then you'll see um, you'll see me excavate the treasure that's in the water and what's inside. So just keep watching for that stuff. Not much for me to say. No reason for me to gab while I show you uh, the last pretty much 10 minutes of the video here showing you where this treasure chest is so stay tuned keep watching and uh hope this all helps take care
I think this is probably clear the way that I I captured it, but um, I figured maybe I should clarify with a little bit of audio commentary. I'm moving the map so that it's in the direction uh, the same way it is on on our actual map. See the X there? That's just outside of the lower left island that honestly on this treasure map looks a little phallic kind of weird and I think I'm going to try to pull up the actual map here so you see here so you see the uh, the island that's kind of the leftmost part of the four islands where I have the crab pot off the side there so we're just going to move just slightly south and to the west in the water. And I definitely suggest doing this during the day because it was in my first playthrough. Um, I did I did the treasure map, one of the last things I did in the game. Um, and it was really hard to find in the dark because <laughs> it is in the middle of the ocean and uh, you're going to you can easily pass by it because that little X isn't very revealing. Doesn't make it that well understood where it is. And you don't, you're not going to see something bubbling on the surface. It's just going to be in the water. So you just kind of have to travel out to that area. So go during the day and you'll be able to find it. And here it is actually in our view. Inside this, I know I've said it enough times before, this is another reason not to bother buying the refined metal. Oh, look at the dolphins. I love when the dolphins show up. And the humpback whale. That's a nice, some really pretty little features this game has. Alright, so kind of overindulging here with the explanation. I wasn't sure if it was going to be clear. So that's where I am. That's how it corresponds with the mouth. I mean the map, the mouth. <laughs> okay, and we get refined metal, we get a research part, we get three, four trinkets that we can sell for moolah. But there you go, another refined metal. So don't spend $2,000 on refined metal for four pieces because you're going to find like seven or eight of them out in the wild. There you go. So that's the fun little bit. Again, nothing to do with any pursuits or the relic or anything else in the game, but it's always good to find more stuff. So I hope that... Uh, Hope that helps you along your way in making some extra money, saving some bucks without spending 500 on that refined metal. It's also it's fun to find a treasure map, put it together, and kind of piece it all together. Great. Next stop is Twisted Strand, the murky swamps, and the mangrove species of fish. Ooh, there's a crown of thorns. There you go. We'll see you there. Hope this helped. Take care.